Hello, Tim here. Welcome to my channel. Have you ever wondered how to make a ball in a box like that out of a block of wood? Well, come along with me and I'll show you how I do it. This is white pine and this is what we're going to make out of this block of wood. Two inches square in case you want to know. Five inches long. Starting out, you gotta have your block of wood, but you need the tools to do it. This is my standard utility whittling knife, kind of general purpose. You probably could do the whole thing with just this, but these other ones come in very handy for certain areas that you want to get into. This is a uh, skew chisel, which is going to be quite helpful in some areas to clean up the sides. This is a, a detail knife, flex cut. This is a roughing out flex cut knife. And this uh, is quite useful. It's a stout knife, but it's very, uh, very sharp. It's a Swedish Mora knife, and it's only one of these groupings here that's curved. And that comes in handy for slicing. The, the advantage of this one is just a curved bent chisel. And it's gonna help in cleaning up some areas as as you rough it out i have two uh marking gauges you don't necessarily have to have marking gauges but they quite come in quite helpful and since i have them i'm going to use them i have them set to different uh points uh widths it's helpful too this is a, a circle template and because it's two inches in diameter i'm going two inches here with my pencil, this is how I determine how thick those those posts are going to be. I'm just touching the corner of the circle, and that's what I set my my first uh, marking gauge to. So set it there, and that's it. That's all that I'm doing on the end. I'm not going to do any other carving or. Uh, cutting out on there. The second one is this it's just half inch and I liked the half inch which is what I did here. So the half inch just gives me a benchmark. It's a little thicker, a little more substantial. You're going to need that when you start carving. So when I'm marking this out I don't go all the way across because I, I don't want the scribe marks there in the end carving. And so I'm marking the top and the bottom. All right, set that down. Now I come with this one that marks my corners. And I know where to stop now because I have that scribe right there. And this helps you when you set in the knife as you're doing your initial cuts. You can do this all with a pencil as well. The problem is that pencil, pencil marks erase and you don't have that indentation here like the scribe gives you, which is what I like. So there we have that. I'm gonna guesstimate the, the center in about here. Now I take my two inch, line it up. You don't, it doesn't really matter if you're exact. Mark this all off, top and bottom, and draw your circle between the lines. Then we're going to take, I got one started back here, set this one aside. On this, in this case, uh, there's the two ways I, I'd start this, and the first thing I did, you can See with a picture, I drilled holes here, but saving saving the, the line, it just reduces the amount of carving you gotta do to get that all out of there. But either, either way, all this has gotta come out before you start shaping the ball. Don't start with the ball or you'll lose your references. I need, do need to make a mention of, of uh, safety equipment. So, I use this if I remember to put it on 
And this is a, a safety tape. Sometimes it's just good to have uh, something to protect your thumb. A glove just kind of covers everything and they get a little a little warm and this has got a little more grip to it too. Now we talk about safety. I want to make a mention of how I start this and whether you drill it out first or, or not, that's entirely up to you. It's You start the same way. So when you're cutting, you're cutting just, just remember you, you know, what whittling is. You're just doing a little bit at a time. Don't use a lot of pressure. Your knives have to be sharp, and I have my my strop right here. I'll probably have to uh, periodically uh, touch it up. You can watch a previous video that I've done uh, on sharpening whittling knives. Going with the grain is be much easier, and it's it's very nice to have that little groove that I did already to follow with the knife. That's what it's for. I'm cutting the line, and I'm probably not in very deep. Now here's where this this little bent chisel works pretty slick. So I'm just cutting, scribing down, going in to the stop cut. I'm not trying to do too deep. Don't try to go too deep on any of this part, or you'll put too much pressure on and liable to slip. And I wouldn't, wouldn't want that to happen. Now I'm going to go to this, my favorite knife, one of them. Know where that knife is going to go every time you make a cut. Just be mindful of it. This has got to come across here as well. Very light cut, very light. Then come, it's many, many passes. Take many, many light cuts and you'll do fine. If you were gonna do these in production, like make a bunch of them to sell, this process would be too slow for obvious reasons. But the whole idea of whittling, at least for me, is it is time consuming and gives you time to to uh, sit and think and listen to music uh, if other people are with you you can visit while you're doing this I find this relaxing so when you're watching a TV show or something like that you're not doing anything so you might as well be doing something I don't recommend watching TV and doing this because you'd end up being distracted and cut yourself. This one's a little further along. So this side's already through. And this side, I'm still using this tool as I'm coming through. I'm not quite at full depth there. Once you have a, a border like this area here, um, you got something to guide your knife against, you can press in a little harder. It's just those initial cuts, you don't want to do that. You make your stop cut and you bring the tool up to it, the cut pops right out. Just keep doing that on all four sides. This is where this knife comes in. A little more useful to, to pair off the... It's a little more aggressive. And this is, I would say, a safer maneuver because you're inside some parameters, you're not going to slip.
This side is pretty much ready to go. Started a little bit there around the corners, but I don't want to do too much yet. Not until I get this side established. There, I've got it roughed out. So what I'm going to start now, you can always clean up more of it later. I'm going to take these lines here on all four sides and accentuate it a little bit more. It's nice to have a little groove you can work in. Now we're going to start losing our our reference once I start rounding this up. So the purpose is we're not going to carve the middle here. We're going to turn these in. The, this, the, the ball will become self-evident as, as you continue to work here. So we're just going to go. Don't try to do it all from one side. Just keep turning it. I'm going to use this knife because I can be more aggressive. And this knife here is kind of a slicing action. Because of the corners here, I'm not as concerned about slipping out of control too much. I mean, you still have to be careful, but there's a safety thing, I think, that way. Now I can just slice this a little more aggressively making something like this is is work but i would say this part of it's the fun part now that you got it roughed out so the idea i'm going for here is it's going to be kind of rounded in. This is where the skew chisel comes in pretty handy this way. Little by little, the ball is rounding out. Now you can see, I'm getting close to breaking through on all the corners there. But whatever you do, don't take anything off the middle or your ball will be uh, too small. 
or could be. You just have more work to do to round it up after that. So we'll break through the corners. The ball won't be perfectly round, but you'll see as we turn it, once it's free, it'll get round as we use the corners to help guide us. So once we get this free, we need to clean up the corners, the posts. I've already broken through here now, so it won't be too long and that ball won't be supported anymore, which makes it a little more difficult to carve. But it's moving a little bit. So I'm going to start rounding it up a little bit more before it's completely free. And then when it is free, we'll turn it around make sure it clears all sides and that just helps us get it round we'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit Feeling it a little bit loose, so I'm kind of moving. There it is. Okay, now it's loose. Now I clean up the the sides, the posts here. Now we start rounding it up. This takes a little while. You gotta make sure you clear it as you turn it. You'll be a little more careful when you get to this point because the ball moves around. You can't be quite as aggressive. So the main goal right now is that you're taking the high spots out so that the ball will freely turn and move in any direction. And then you, theoretically it'll be completely round. Can't quite rotate it yet, I'm getting there. Well, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to call this done. So that's it. That's how I did it. This one needs more work. And as you turn the ball, you, you can carve off a little bit more and it'll get round like this one is.
So thanks for watching and please subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you would and we'll see you next time. Happy carving. Mm -hmm.